But as they say on late night TV, wait, there's more. Through an Autodesk project called Neon, you can now render a series of images in batch mode, and we've made this service work with any DWG file. Here we see Neon rendering from a variety of predefined camera locations, giving us back a high quality rendering from every angle. If visualizations like this didn't require special hardware and you can do it without any time impact on your local resources, wouldn't you do more of it? You could have Neon automatically render a whole film strip from various locations in your building. We can also use this tremendous power to help us see further into the design process, extending design all the way into the manufacturing process. You know, it doesn't do any good to design something only to find out that later that we can't really manufacture it. But if our tools allow us to consider manufacturing issues during the design phase, we gain all kinds of insights and efficiencies. Here we see a plastic cover being designed, design software connected to analysis capabilities in the cloud, and uh, looking at the manufacturability software, uh, sorry, cost and sustainability. And we see that this particular design would have failed in manufacturing. That red up at the top showed it wasn't going to fill correctly. So we increase the thickness of the part and try it again. All of the downstream processes continue to run in the cloud, and we now see our design is feasible. And as that final step, we even played the filling operation in real time to check our work. Sometimes we know what our basic design should be at a kind of fundamental level, but we'd like the computer to help us take it to its logical conclusion. In this case, we're designing a part where the basic criteria are known and understood, but where there's still a lot of room for improvement within those basic constraints. And if we make those constraints explicit and tell the computer where it can vary parameters, well, then we can delegate to the computer the task of evaluating all of those options within our higher level solution set. We let the service crank through those permutations, analyze them, and then give us back a list to choose from. We can choose the best design based on our stated criteria and commit the suggested improvements back to the model. We've seen how the three major components of infinite computing, awareness, access, and power, all provide major tools for both design and innovation. And I've also highlighted the benefits of adopting a new mindset along with these new tools. You know, we don't want to just do the same thing in a different place. We want to do new things that were previously impossible. Well, what does all that mean to you? What does it add up to? It adds up to a world where computing power is plentiful, it exists everywhere, and we are never out of touch with our data, our software, and our project teams, no matter where we are. And that makes a huge difference in how we can use the technology to help us create better, more efficient, and more innovative designs. Like the microscope, it opens a whole new level of understanding.